Oh 
especially when promises seem broken. I confess, I was one of the many who expected a warrior brandishing a sword, ready to crush Rome's tyranny. This was the Messiah we've been waiting for. But this was not the Messiah that arrived on the back of a colt that noisy afternoon. I probably wouldn't have known him, except for the fact that he knew me. I had met him several years earlier in a small Sumerian town called Sycor, about noon, by a well. I was busy at work that day. My eyes were downcast, and I thought I was alone. And then suddenly, I heard a voice. Woman, will you give me a drink? A man was sitting by the well. I was stunned. He was Jewish, and they did not associate with Samaritans. I said, how can you ask me for a drink? If you knew who it was that asked you, he would have given you living water. Living water? I said, living water? Where can I get this living water? What could this man possibly mean? Everyone who drinks the water I give him will never thirst again. Never thirst again, I cried. Sir, give me this water. So I may see he's coming to this well. I was not prepared for what would follow. Go. Call your husband and come back. I couldn't speak. So many secrets. So much shame. I had lied for years about my past, but this time, I can only utter the truth. Sir, I... I, I have no husband. I have no husband. I was not married to the man that I was presently with, but this stranger knew all about that, as he did my previous five husbands. And yet, there was no condemnation in his voice, only grace. Surely he was a prophet. Sir, I said, I can see you are a prophet. I know that the Messiah is coming and he will explain everything to us. Then time seemed to stop. He looked directly at me and said, I am he, the very one speaking to you. Could he be? He must be. The one we've been waiting for. The one I've been waiting for. Christ. Our anointed one. The, the Messiah. Messiah. I must tell everyone. So I ran back to the village, up every street and to every doorway. Come, see this man who told me everything I ever did. Could he be the Christ? Many believed. Others did not. My reputation as one not to be trusted preceded me. And so the whispers and gossip returned. I eventually traveled to Jerusalem to escape the lies and to find the one who knew the truth about me. But Jerusalem proved to be no different than my tiny village. Religious authorities spewed hatred and condemnation. Hosannas became denials and then silence. Even those closest to Jesus turned away at the end.
and wept, but I was filled with rage. An innocent man was being executed. And then I remembered that the words of the Hebrew scriptures. He was despised and rejected by them. A man familiar with suffering, he carried our sorrows. I too have been rejected by men. I too knew suffering. But why did this man choose to carry my sorrows? forget the ancient words. He was despised and rejected by men. Surely he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. Oh Lord Jesus, can you truly take my pain? Can you carry my sorrows?
it seems as though I've spent my life waiting for the dawn to reappear. So many sunless days, so many empty nights. And there had never been a darker hour than when Jesus' lifeless body was laid in a borrowed tomb outside Jerusalem. Jesus Christ was dead, and all my hopes had died with him. Saturday was gray and silent. Jesus' followers had all disappeared. They were either paralyzed by grief or hiding in fear. Once again, I felt abandoned. I slowly packed my meager belongings and prepared for the long journey home. I would leave at daybreak, although I knew I would travel without direction and light. But on that third morning, the dawn had finally appeared. In the early shadows, I met several women on the road. They had come from the tomb. The stone is rolled away, they cried. Jesus has Once blind, now I see. Once a 